Hi everyone and welcome back. In the previous week, we talked about the use cases and the architecture of Web3. And in this lesson, we are going to talk about what do the decentralized applications bring to the table? Because we saw the different structures between Web2 and Web3. Now let's look at what they actually bring. Even though they bring a lot of things to the table, we have three main ones. The first one is protecting your data. While using decentralized applications, we are using addresses. So we are not exposing our any data to the third parties so that we would stay safe in that sense. And also one of the benefits is that these third parties cannot process our data. And another benefit of that, we are actually not trusting anyone to save our data because we didn't give in our case in the first place. First and biggest selling point here is to protecting our data. And then we have trustless transactions. These trustless transactions are really important. If you remember in the first week when we were talking about the middleman, we said that this middleman stays between our communication with the internet, with the web and our interaction with the web. And because of that reason, they can gain a lot of power, block contents, or they can require for us to do something in a specific way. So we said that that created a couple of problems. So with this trustless transactions, we can actually communicate to another party and do business with another party without the middleman. And at the end, because we don't have to trust the middleman, we don't have to worry about a fraud or other things like that that much. So this is also one of the benefits of this trustless transaction. Third one is innovation and diversity. What we mean by innovation and diversity? We mean that it created a couple of new areas on the web where we can develop applications, people can use it. Basically, it's create new fields. So let's give a couple of examples for these uh, fields and systems. The first and the most obvious one is DeFi. With DeFi, we can actually create a very, very wide range of applications that can define economical systems from ground up. With DeFi, we can alter our economics so we can actually have a more responsive and transparent economic system, which is more aligned with this era that we are living in. Then we have gambling. With the gambling, actually what we can have is we can work with the tokens, which is an obvious one in the field of gambling, but also we can have a transparent gambling system so people can see how the system works and people can trust the system. And since it can have its own tokens, it can have its own tokenomics, we can create a lot of transparent, trustworthy and various kinds of gambling applications. And the third one is a little bit more fun, which is gaming. With the gaming, what we can do is we can actually on the products in the game. So imagine that you have an item you buy for your character, but you can actually own that item like you would have your t-shirt in real life. So maybe you can use it between games and we can have tokenomics on the games and we can create a lot of non-fungible items and systems so that we can create a new way of gaming experience that we couldn't have done on Web2. So with this integration, of non-fungible tokens, tokenomics, and decentralized systems in the gaming, we are redefining the gaming field with a lot of possibilities. For the fourth one, we have Metaverse. This one is the one I believe needs no introduction, but with Metaverse, what we can do is we can create a virtual environment where we can socialize, play games, do business, so we can have our life in real life simulated in a decentralized version. We can have our own economy, own items, and more. 
so we can create a decentralized virtual world with metaverse. As a final example, and I'm saying final example, but as we saw, there are many, many examples, many, many use cases that we can actually associate with Web3. But in this example, our last one is crowdfunding. So with crowdfunding, we can have systems that people can actually invest in products. So not only investors from some specific locations with the regulations of that locations can invest, but everyone in the world through the uh, cryptocurrencies can invest in products and become a process. And this is specifically important for the globalization of the cryptocurrencies. As we say, Web3 and blockchain is more democratic system than we have right now. And this is one of the clear examples of that where everyone can participate instead of an isolated one part. So again, these are a couple of examples that we can show, but we have many examples. So if we have a quick overview, we can see that decentralized applications bring many things on the table, but as the most important ones, data production, trustless transactions, and innovation and diversity and we saw that with these we can create many fields many fields have been created we are creating more fields and these fields are maturing every day this is not a revolution but an iteration we are creating the systems based on the knowledge we had in centralized systems but we are actually transforming the way that they are working thank you very much for this video that will be all and i will see you on the next one